Hey everybody, Spencer from Energy Sage here today just outside Boston to watch a solar installation. The solar installers just got here and we're gonna walk you through every single step along the way to getting solar panels put up on your home. So come on, check out the house. We're here with Plug PV, a solar company that performs installations all along the East Coast. This morning, six members of the installation crew arrived around 9 a.m. to begin. Two crew members to get started on the roof, and two electricians to get started with the wiring and inverter install, as well as two members of the team to be crew chiefs for this installation. Most solar installations take a day or two to get the hardware in place. For this one, Plug PV has planned two days due to the slope of some parts of the roof and also to accommodate our production. As you can see, this house has a lot of open space around it, which makes it easy to offload all the equipment from the truck and stage the equipment for installation. Upon arriving, these installers started straight away establishing a safe perimeter around the house with caution tape, as well as setting up their own safety equipment on the roof. During a final walkthrough with the homeowner, the installers confirmed the location of the inverter in the layout of the panels, which they then marked off on the roof. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the details of this solar panel installation. I'm standing next to one of the 23 solar panels that are going on this homeowner's roof. These solar panels are made by REC, a very popular brand with homeowners on Energy Sage. Each one of these 23 panels is rated for a power output of 405 watts. So the entire system will have a rating of about 9.3 kilowatts. The other major component of a solar energy installation is an inverter. When your solar panels generate electricity, they produce direct current electricity or DC energy, which can't be used by most appliances in your house. An inverter takes that DC electricity and converts it into usable alternating current or AC electricity, the type that comes out of the outlets in your home. There are three main types of solar inverters. String or central inverters are typically installed on the side of your house or near your circuit breaker and convert electricity for all the panels on that string all at once in that single box. This means that if one panel is experiencing shading or is malfunctioning, it will impact the performance of the other panels on its string. On the other hand, microinverters are installed underneath each solar panel and convert electricity at the panel level. Microinverters are a great choice if you have shading on your roof, though they do typically come with a higher price tag. Finally, optimized string inverters, which is what we have at this installation, present the best of both worlds for some homeowners. They convert DC to AC electricity at the string level, but then they provide DC power optimizers to put on the back of each individual panel, which can help reduce the impact of shading, which is a consideration for this homeowner. Optimized string inverters are typically less expensive than microinverters, and this particular installation is using Solar Edge optimized string inverters. Solar Edge is the most popular brand of optimized string inverters on Energy Sage. One of the biggest concerns we hear from homeowners about going solar is that they're worried about damage to their roof. So we're here today with Steve Weigel, CEO of Plug PV, to learn about how they install racking equipment to protect your roof from damage. So what are the typical components of a racking system for a solar installation? And what are you looking for as the installer to make sure that racking system is up to code or up to your expectation? You know, 90 plus percent of the roofs that we install on are gonna be comp shingle. Other areas of the country, we do, we do see tile and other alternative t uh, forms of roofing materials. But the reality is that the, the vast majority are in that comp shingle category. With that, we're looking for a mounting solution that essentially conforms to that, that shingle contour the right way, laps with that shingle, and sheds, uh, sheds water the right way. Um, up from there, we're looking for um, strength and reliability in our rail uh, up over that mount, and then something uh, user-friendly, uh, easy to install for our guys. Everything you put uh, on the roof uh, here at, at a solar installation like this uh, has been specifically designed coordination with a roofing with many roofing companies manufacturers and uh, and that racking manufacturer to fit that roof. 
One of the other questions that we get from homeowners, especially if they live in an area where maybe they experience high winds frequently or they're worried about potentially hurricanes, mm -hmm. is just how strong is this solar racking equipment? So can you speak to how strong it is? So uh, it's jurisdictional. We're actually working with your township and we're saying uh, to the township, what is your snow load? Uh, what are your your wind rating factors that you you require in the design and the engineering phase of this system. And then um, essentially when we have that information, we put it all together and make sure that the equipment that we're installing is going to be above the threshold that that town is requiring. It's not as simple as saying, you know, every system is rated to X, but what I can confidently say is that every system is rated better than the town is asking. While a couple members of the install crew are busy at work on the roof installing all of the mounting and the racking system that will actually connect the solar panels to the roof, the two electricians who are part of the install crew have been busy mounting this inverter on the side of the house and getting all of the electrical work set up and ready to go so that when we install the panels, we can connect it to the inverter and turn the whole thing on. Here's what you need to know about the inverter system. We're here with Josh Barozny, the VP of Field Ops for Plug PV, to learn a little bit more about this inverter system that's included in this solar install. So Josh, can you tell us a little bit about the inverters that you installed today? Absolutely, so today we'll be uh, installing a 10K solar edge inverter. Uh, so that's 10 kilowatts of AC side. Uh, and that is paired with optimizers on the roof, uh, 400 watt optimizers. Each optimizer uh, will go underneath a 400 watt panel. And they, it's a string system, but they're individually optimized. So each panel will produce its own power. What I personally like about this system uh, is that if there happens to be a uh, issue with the system, uh, it's generally localized on one optimizer. Inverters are located on the side of the house, uh, and then that is uh, coupled uh, with wires going to the rooftop system, and that's where the optimizers live. And they live under each panel, uh, and they are mounted to the rail that holds the optimizer and, and the panel down to the roof. That's a wrap on day one. Tomorrow we'll be back to finalize the installation, mounting the solar panels on the roof, and finalizing all of the wiring with the inverter itself. We'll see you here tomorrow. We're back to finish up this solar panel installation. Now that the racking system is installed and all of the optimizers have been wired and put into place, it's time to mount each solar panel. The installers will carry each solar panel, which weigh about 40 pounds, up to the roof and hand them off to the roof crew. On the roof, the installers will lay out each individual solar panel, ensuring that it is aligned properly, connecting it to its individual optimizer to get the electricity back to the string inverter, and then bolting the panel to the racking system. Once all of the panels are in place and secured, we can work on our final step, connecting the system to the electrical panel. The last step today is to connect the solar panel install to the main electrical panel. Your main electrical panel will have an amperage rating, which will tell you how much electricity it can support. Generally speaking, you need to have at least 100 amps service to your main electrical panel in order to support going solar. In this case, the homeowner has a 200 amp main electrical panel, so they're all good to go. The solar installer is going to add a back feed breaker, which will take the production from your solar panels after it's converted to AC electricity by your inverter and feed it into your main electrical panel so that it just looks like any other circuit on your main electrical panel. In some instances, the solar installer may be able to get away without doing this, but that's what we're gonna do here today. And with that in mind, because there are empty slots at the bottom of this main electrical panel, again, this homeowner has more than enough space, more than enough capacity on their main panel to support going solar. Now that the physical work of the solar install is complete, the last step before this solar panel installation can be turned on is for this install to pass both city and utility inspections. This process can take anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, depending upon how busy everybody is in the process. Once the utility signs off on this solar install, they'll come out and either reprogram your existing electric meter or replace it with a new smart meter that can capture both how much electricity you're pulling from the grid, as well as how much electricity you send to the grid when your solar panels are producing more than you're using on site. 
This is super important to the whole process of going solar because this is what enables net metering policy. Under net metering, when you produce more electricity than you consume, you send that excess electricity to the grid in exchange for bill credits. And then when you are consuming more than you're producing, you actually pull electricity from the utility against those bill credits. And in the end, you are billed on net. If you want to determine if solar is right for you, come to energysage.com. We have helpful guides, price estimates, expert energy advisors, and a marketplace full of vetted solar installers who will compete for your business. When you sign up for a free account on Energy Sage, you'll receive custom solar or solar plus storage quotes for your home that you can compare across price, equipment, quality, installer reputation, and much more to find the system that works for your needs. Best part of all, it's all free for you to use. So come check us out, get started on your solar journey today, and thanks so much for watching.